Toughness, grit, competitive spirit, hard work, accountability, humility. Values Jerry Sloan learned growing up in Southern Illinois. Born on March 28, 1942, Jerry was the youngest of 10 children. He learned how hard life could be at a young age. His father died when he was just four years old. His family lived in poverty. He worked on oil rigs, walking miles on dusty dirt roads to school and back. It was in McLeansboro where Jerry found basketball, a sport that saved him. He starred at McLeansboro High School and then at Evansville where he led the Purple Aces to back-to-back -back Division II national championships. He was drafted fourth overall in the 1965 NBA draft by the Baltimore Bullets. One year later, he was traded to the expansion Chicago Bulls. The original Bull was known for his toughness on defense. Wouldn't you just love one more time to see old number four on that stadium floor growl at referee Jack Med? He led the Bulls to the playoffs in their first season. He averaged 15 points and seven rebounds in 11 NBA seasons. He was a two-time All-Star, six-time All-Defense. His number four was the first jersey retired by the franchise. He won a lot of games as a player with the Bulls, but he couldn't duplicate that success as their head coach. Well, you got to win. I mean, I wasn't winning enough games. He was fired in the middle of his third season. Front office. They decided that they were going a different direction, and it's not my position to judge them at this point. His failure in Chicago would lead to a new opportunity in Utah. He got a call from Frank Layden. Jerry was an assistant coach under Frank Layden from 1984 to 1988. On December 12, 1988, Frank Layden abruptly resigned, and Jerry Sloan became the head coach of the Utah Jazz. I'm in the position now that he had, and I'm looking forward to it, and I'm excited about it. It was the beginning of a Hall of Fame run. The qualities that defined him as a player were the same as a coach. He was a fiery competitor. Oh, he shoves the referee. He's out. And Sloan throws him a kiss right back. He don't accept you being tired. He don't accept things like that. But he realized you do get tired. But when that horn blows, you should be ready to play if you got any kind of heart. There were ups and downs early playoff exits. And he said, no, do you want to coach this team? Which means, do you want to fight? But the team led by future Hall of Famers John Stockton and Carl Malone took on the personality of their coach. Trailer to the mailman, in your face, Brad Lojas. And the Jazz won a lot. Three-pointer, it's good, he did it. The Jazz win the game, incredible. You gotta love it, baby. The Jazz have done it again. Jerry Sloan as happy as he can be. After years of playoff disappointment, John Stockton sent the Utah Jazz to the NBA Finals in 1997. Oh. Stockton, open three, yeah! Jerry's reaction will never be forgotten. The Jazz came close, but Michael Jordan stood in the way of that elusive NBA title. As the Stockton to Malone era came to a close, Jerry would keep coaching and keep fighting. He was dealing with losing on the court and adversity off the court. Bobby and Jerry were high school sweethearts. They had three children. His wife of 41 years battled breast cancer for six years. But I'm gonna do whatever I have to do to stay here with this wonderful man as long as I can. You know, I appreciate the support everybody's given us, but it's so damn difficult for us. Then after battling pancreatic cancer, she died in 2004. It was a dark time for Jerry, but he found happiness again. He met Tammy Jessup. They were married in 2006. As he found happiness again off the court, the Jazz became a winner again on the court. A team that featured Carlos Boozer, Darren Williams, Mehmet Okur, Andre Kirilenko, and Paul Millsap averaged 52 wins over four seasons. They won four playoff series in four years and reached the Western Conference Finals for the sixth time in franchise history. Jerry would receive basketball's highest honor in 2009. He was inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. It seemed like Jerry would coach the Jazz forever, but his 23 years as the head coach of the Utah Jazz came to an abrupt end. Today, the Utah Jazz has accepted the resignation of Jerry Sloan. On February 10th, 2011, after a game against the Chicago Bulls, Jerry Sloan and his longtime assistant Phil Johnson resigned in the middle of the 2010-11 season. My time is up. 
then it's time for me to move on. And today is the end of an amazing era. Sloan would continue to work for the franchise as an advisor. No, I knew I'd miss it. I knew I'd miss it. Welcome to Jerry Sloan's Manor Night. On January 31st, 2014, the Jazz honored Jerry Sloan. Just want to say you the, you the best. By raising a banner, which reads 1,223, the number of games he won as head coach of the Jazz. I thought that's how many technical fouls I <laughs> Jerry Sloan was a fighter, but there was one fight he could not win. I was told I have Parkinson's disease with Louis dementia. These diseases would eventually take his life, but they cannot take his legacy. Legends never die. The impact he had will live on.